Let's kick off the final video in the interview section and talk about conditional logic. This is often the section of authoring where people are the most nervous. It's the closest you'll get to coding, and that can be nerve-wracking for those of us who weren't trained as coders. But fear not. Coding is writing a language, and it follows specific rules. Once you learn those rules, you can create powerful logic statements with them. I bet most of you who are legal professionals are very familiar with grammatical rules. Once I show you the rules for programming in A to J Author, they're going to make sense in a way that you didn't expect. The rules for writing properly formatted conditions are very similar to those for writing properly formatted sentences. Before we get into the specifics of the rules, let's talk about where the scripting happens. All conditional logic statements are written in the Question Design Editor under the Advanced Logic section. You can script conditions to be evaluated in two ways by A to J Author. Before logic statements are evaluated before the page is displayed to the end user. After logic statements are evaluated after the user has pushed a button. This is an important distinction to remember because it can affect the end user experience. With logic statements, it's possible to move the end user to different pages outside the normal button branching structure using go-to statements. With before logic, if you have a condition on page A that would move an end user to page C and that condition is satisfied, a to J author won't display page A to the user, but will instead jump the user to page C. So you need to think through the exact sequencing of logic statements and their position in the before and after boxes as you're drafting your interview. So quick review. Before logic fires before the user sees the page. After logic fires after the user has interacted with the page, i.e. pushed a button. Here's your cheat sheet for logic scripting. There are only five main elements that you have to know to get started. They are if, else, set, go to, and end if. For sure, you'll always need an if and an end if. Set and go to are the commands. They tell A to J author what to do. Else is the alternative option if you want to include one. Now let's make that bridge to the grammar rules that I talked about before. Just like you would diagram a sentence, here's a diagram of a logic condition on the right-hand side of the screen. You always have an if to start the logic statement. That's your capital letter at the beginning of a sentence. The if some variable equals doesn't equal is greater than is less than some math compared to some value. The variable name is wrapped in brackets and the value you're comparing it to is in quotes unless the variable type is a true false variable. Then you have the meat of the statement with the set variable name and what value you're setting that variable to in quotes and or you have a go-to statement that branches your user to some page with the page name in quotes. Then you can have an else statement which tells A to J author that you want something to happen based on the opposite of the if statement. So if your if statement is if variable one is true, then the else would happen if variable one was false. The else is just a breakpoint. It doesn't actually do anything, so you also need a set and or a go-to after the else. When you're all done with the sets, go-tos, and else parts, you need to end the logic statement with an end if. It's like the punctuation requirement for properly ending a sentence. The logic doesn't work or execute without the end if. So quick recap. Start with an if, then add set, go-to, and else statements in the middle, and always end with an end if. One more important pointer. Each of those five commands needs to be on their own line. They don't play well together, so make sure to put a hard return, that's the enter key for most users, between each element. This is a new skill you'll be implementing, so A to J Author has built in some help for you. As you're scripting, A to J Author will try to help you complete the logic statement by supplying variable names and page names that match the characters that you type. You start typing if and then add an open bracket symbol. This triggers the A to J helper, and as you type out the characters, it'll show you the ones that match what you've typed. Then you can select the one you want to use, or you can just keep typing, confident that you've spelled it exactly as it's stored in the variable list. The same principle applies with page names. As you type go to and add quotes, A to J starts matching known pages to those characters. You can then pick the page from the list or just type it out exactly as shown. There will be times when you don't properly script a logic statement. A to J author also has a helper built in to make sure you don't write a statement that it can't execute properly for your end user. The helper turns the scripting window red and often includes an error message indicating what the error is. The example in the screenshot here includes an error with a variable name in the first line doesn't match any known variables. 
A to J author is telling you that there is an undefined, that is unknown, variable, and which one is at issue. We try to make the error messages as clear as possible, but if you come across one that you don't understand, there is a frequently asked questions page on our website, a to jauthor.org slash content slash what do these error messages mean logic sections, or you can find it under the learn tab, then frequently asked questions. If you remember from the navigating the tools video in section one, we've created a place where all the logic in your interview is stored. It's called the all logic tab. You can see every logic statement inside your interview on one page. The boxes are editable and will show the error messages if they are present. It's a great place to go when you're reviewing the entirety of your interview at the end of the drafting process to ensure you haven't made any logic errors before you publish. It's also a great place to check when you upload an existing interview and want to check for potential logic errors. Now let's talk through some real life examples that you can potentially implement in your own A to J guided interview. The first real world example combines functions and branching in the logic statement. You can use a logic statement to conditionally branch an end user to a specific question based on some variable value. This routes them outside the normal branching that occurs via the buttons in A to J author. This example asks everyone who uses the form for their birth date. Then there is a condition that tests the user's birth date converted to a year value using the age function to see if the user is over 18. If the value of the variable client DOBDA converted to a number is less than 18, the end user is routed out of the normal stream of the questions to a page that tells them that they aren't old enough to use the automated form and eventually kicks them out of the interview. This saves the end user who will go on to successfully complete the form, the hassle of answering two questions about what their birth date is and if they're over 18 years old. The next example I have is writing a condition that will set the correct form of a noun, either the singular or the plural form based on the end user's answer to a question about how many of something they have. So the real world example is that you would want to use the correct form of the word child or children in a subsequent question, and you also are asking the end user already how many children they have, perhaps to go into a repeat loop to gather information about those children. So using the variable number child NU, you evaluate whether that number is greater than one using the evaluator symbol greater than. On the next line, you set the variable child or children TE. This is the variable you'll use in subsequent pages that will hold the correct form of the word child. You set that then to children if the condition of number child NU is greater than one or else otherwise set that same variable to the word child because the end user only has one child. The third example gets more complicated in that it combines multiple conditions into a single logic statement. This screenshot shows two different logic statements. As an aside, you can have as many logic statements in one page as you want. There's no limit beyond your imagination and perseverance. The first logic statement uses the end user's income in the variable income NU and tests whether it is greater than 35,000. For this example, let's assume 35,000 is the income cutoff for your program's eligibility. If the user makes over that, then they are automatically disqualified from receiving your organization's services. So in this statement, if the user's income is over 35,000, I want A to J author to set a subsequent variable called income too high TF to true, and I wanna branch the end user to a sorry you don't qualify question, which will then ultimately kick them out of the interview. If the user's income is not over 35,000, I want that flag variable of income too high TF to be set to false. Now I'm not done evaluating the end user's income. I need to know more about their income if it's between 25,000 and 35,000. For this example, people who make 25,000 or less automatically qualify for my program services. However, there's a middle ground where people who make over 25,000 but under the 35,000 cap might qualify as well, but I need more information. So the second logic statement tests for those middle people and if it finds the user in that zone between 25,000 and 35,000, it branches them to a follow-up question about their income perhaps asking them about expenses or dependents. So this means test example shows you multiple ways you can include multiple conditions in your logic statements. Another popular one is combining first plus middle plus last name into a full name variable. The twist comes when you include the has answered function to test for the middle name. That way your final variable won't have an odd extra space or an undefined variable warning if the user doesn't include or doesn't have a middle name. 
the way to do this is to set a variable like client name full TE to first plus space plus middle plus last if they have answered middle. Otherwise, set client name full TE to first plus space plus last. This final example came out of helping an author. The author's form required the name of the preparer to be included on the form as well. The idea was that the A to J guided interview could be filled out by an end user alone or with the assistance of an attorney. In the interview, the author asks the end user who they are, the plaintiff or the defendant. Then it asks for their name. Then it combines it with the has answered logic we just talked about into the variable plaintiff name full TE or defendant name full TE. The author also asks for the attorney's name if assisted by an attorney and combines it into a full name variable. Based on that same question, which was who helped you prepare this form, the user can pick from a list with custom options of myself and an attorney for demonstration purposes here. The author then sets the variable prepare name TE to either the end user's full name or the attorney's full name. In the subsequent template, the author can then use the name of the litigant and the attorney and mark who prepared the forms as required by the court. This example builds on the has answered and the multiple conditions in one logic block idea. Now that we've talked logic statements and I've shown you a couple real world examples, I'd be reticent if I didn't mention the logic citation field. We added citation fields in 2019, and I think they're very important for the continued growth and support of your document automation projects. I've been around a long time now to see projects from a decade ago that are in dire need of an update, but owners are hesitant to do it because of the amount of work involved. Part of that tech debt lift isn't actually tech related. It's content and making sure that the legal requirements, reasoning, and restrictions originally coded into the interviews are still good law. So to make it easier on yourself and future developers, add in notes and citations wherever possible. If you use 25,000 and 35,000 in a logic statement to test someone's means, you can explain where you got those in citations and notes. It's very easy to run a citation report on the reports tab that'll pull out all of the notes and citation fields and let you check those underlying assumptions in a few minutes every couple months rather than letting these interviews go five to 10 years without anyone touching them. Now go practice. There's a sample exercise devoted to scripting advanced logic statements. It can be found in the applied workflow section of this training or in the learn section of our website, a2jauthor.org under the sample exercises. That concludes the training on conditional logic and finishes out section three of this series focused on the interview. You should now have the skills necessary to create a storyboard based on your forms and templates, and run that script through a plain language edit, perhaps with the help of AI. Then take that script and turn it into a well-built A to J guided interview using the tools in the question design editor and A to J author at large. Congratulations on finishing this section, you're almost done. The next section will focus on what to do with your A to J guided interview when you're all done with drafting and it's almost ready for prime time.